Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John and this is the fourth video in a series on solutions for our data cleansing challenge. So in a previous video, I presented this challenge, which was to convert this text in column C into time values. And we have the solution here in column D and we've looked at different ways to go about this using formulas, some data tools, Power Query. And in this video, we're going to look at VBA solutions. So solutions with macros and UDFs or user defined functions. I'll make this file available for free download and put a link to that in the description below this video so you can download it and follow along. So let's take a look at some of these solutions. So first one came in from my good friend John Peltier from uh, PeltierTech.com. He's created two different UDFs or user-defined functions uh, in VBA that will return the value, the time value. And the first one is in column D here using his, uh, what he defined as time numeric. So this function time numeric. So let's jump into the VB editor and see how this works. So we'll go to the developer tab, visual basic button, keyboard shortcut, alt F11. And within this workbook here, I do have in the modules, uh, different modules from the different uh, contributors. So here's uh, John Peltier's uh, UDFs or functions, and these are functions. So we can see here's the name of the function, time numeric, and uh, the parameter that we're going to pass through is a string called time string. So this would be from that cell. We reference the cell that contains the text and that'll be passed through to the UDF. And then here is the uh, function itself. And one way to check these or step through these is we can actually add a breakpoint here right to the top of the function. So just click in the gutter over there, a keyboard shortcut F9, that will add that breakpoint. Then we can jump back over to Excel. We can hit F2 here to edit this uh, formula. And then when we hit enter, that's actually going to uh, run the macro or the function here. And we'll stop right here at the beginning of the function. And so now we can hit F8 on the keyboard to step through this and see how it works. So the first thing we're doing really is, uh, well, first you declared this time array as a variant, and we're going to use that to store an array. So we're using the split function here and passing the string through that original argument there, uh, the value there. You can see it here if I hover, 10 hours, 39 minutes, 40 seconds. So we're passing that through and we're gonna split it with the space character. So hit F8 on the keyboard there and that will split that into the array. Now, if you wanted to see the contents of that, you could go view and then the locals window, that'll bring up the locals window down here. We can expand out our time array and here are all of the items or elements or, or values within the array here. So we have these, you can see them, all split up here by the space character. So I'm going to go ahead and close the locals window now just to give us some space. So that was the first step there is just putting those into that array. And then we loop through the array. So from the lower bound of the array, which is a zero bound to the upper bound, in this case, it has uh, five items and uh, we're going to uh, step through two. So we're gonna do a step two. So we're gonna step through and skip each uh, other item or the odd item really. So zero, then uh, one, then three, and then five. We're just going to loop through those. So that's what John's doing here to make that a little more efficient. And uh, here we're going to use the select case statement. And this is similar to an if statement. So we're going to check the item uh, to see if it contains any of these words. And John's also used the lowercase function here just to convert everything to lowercase uh, within each item of the array. So if we hover this, we can see that we're now evaluating hours, the word hours. That's the uh, really the second, uh, the second item in our array. I forgot to mention that there's also a plus one here. So we're really going uh, one, three, five. Yeah, that's what we're doing. One, three, five is the items we're stepping through. Uh, and then we, we're doing that here. So we're going to evaluate hours and then we'll hit F8 here. So for this case, uh, it's evaluating that to see if it does contain either of these. So it does in that case. And here we're just going to declare this variable for the hours. It's a long uh, data type, long integer. And then uh, we'll move back one item within our array. So that's what this time index minus one is doing. It's moving back one item and returning the number before the word hours. We can see if we hover it there, returning the number 10 or the item that's before that in our array. So if we go view locals again, just so we can see this, 
uh, that would be we're evaluating this here, which is the first item because these are zero based. And then we're subtracting one and returning this item from the array, the number zero here, the, the first actual item in the array. So we're returning that number 10. So that's what's happening here and just setting that to hours. So if we hit F8 now, hover hours, we can see that's going to hold a 10. And then that jumps down to the end select here, hit F8 on the keyboard again. This will go to the next item in the loop. So again, now we're, if we hover this here, oops, sorry about that. We're now at the third item, actually the fourth item in the loop. Uh, in this case here, if we hover it, this is going to be our minutes. So this will jump down to this uh, statement here for this case. And we'll store that number there, which is, oops, we hover that, uh, 39 for the minutes, so it's gonna store that. And then we'll do the next one, jump down to seconds, and here we're gonna store 40 for the seconds. So now we have all of our variables filled for hours, uh, minutes, and seconds. And then the last uh, line of code down here is just going to use the time serial function to convert that into a time value. So hit F8 one more time. You can hover time numeric there to see that we get that time value right there, uh, 10, 39, 40. And then hit F8 one more time to stop running the function, jump back over to Excel and see that's exactly what's returned right there in column D. And then in cases where we don't have hours and minutes, the function still works. It's just going to bypass looking for hours and minutes. If we hit Alt F11 to jump back, it would just uh, bypass these sections, these cases, because it's not finding hours and minutes. It would just fill the variable for seconds and hours and minutes would hold a zero because when these variables are declared here in the dim line, they're just gonna default to zero. So those would hold zeros. And in that case, we'd have zero here, zero here, and then uh, it would find 25 seconds and convert that to a time value. So very cool solution from John there. He also provided another one uh, down here, which is really the same basic function. However, it just outputs text instead of the time value. So instead of using that time serial function like we saw up here, it's just going to uh, add these or concatenate these, join these together, uh, use the format function to just make sure we have two numbers there or that preceding zero if we just have a single digit. So that's what that one looks like there. So great solutions, you can definitely check those out. Uh, next we'll look at solutions uh, from Graham. So we'll jump over to this module here, I'll scroll up a bit. Uh, Graham is a member of our VBA Pro course and came up with uh, two different solutions. The first one here uses an if statement, so a little bit different. Uh, he's using the in string function to again find that first number uh, or the first character number, I should say, where this starts. Uh, so this would be similar to the find or search functions within Excel, which we saw in the first video. Uh, we're using in string in VBA to return that first character number uh, for each of those hours, minutes, and seconds. Actually removed all the S's with the replace function up here. So it's just looking for E, C, O, and D. And uh, then finding those start numbers. And then down here, using some if statements to determine if there's a number there, if it's greater than zero, that means that uh, time increment exists and uh, then using this uh, string, kind of string manipulation here to return the number and then convert it into seconds. So, or I'm sorry, not convert it into seconds, but convert it into a fraction of a day for the time value. So the hours are divided by 24, the minutes are divided by 1440, which is the number of minutes in a day, and then the seconds are divided by 86,400, which is the number of seconds in a day. So those values are added together. As you go down here, you can see that the uh, time is added to whatever time increment is returned here. Uh, that variable that's storing that time from the sections above is just added here to the variable. And so we continue to sum up or add those times together until we get the uh, last line of the function down here, which is going to return that total time. And then of course that returns that fraction, that fraction that we th then would need to format as a time value within Excel, just like we saw in all of the previous videos. So I'll jump back over to Excel here. We'll check out Graham's sheet. Same is true with uh, John's solution as well. These would all need to be formatted. Just right click here. Oops, let me right click down here. Format cells, 
we're going to use a custom number format here, hours, minutes, and seconds, to return that time value uh, formatted as a time. So if we didn't have that and we just chose general, you could see this would be the fraction of the day here for those 11 hours, uh, but we wanna use that custom and then go down here, hours, minutes, and seconds. That'll show us the 11 hours, 36 minutes, 38 seconds. So that was one of uh, Graham's solutions. Graham also came up with a very similar solution to John uh, by splitting into an, splitting the text into an array and then using the select case statement there to then find each of the time periods within the text and then output uh, using the time value function here, also output that back to a time value. So I won't go through that one in detail, it's similar to John's, but definitely check that one out as well. And then we also had Charles Marshall uh, post one that was again uh, fairly similar using a loop using the uh, split function again to create the array. In this case, he uh, uses a do loop and then some if statements instead of that select statement uh, to find each of the time increments. So kind of a combination of both there, which is super cool and uh, outputs that down here again using the time value function. So great to see all these different ways to solve this problem uh, using VBA. If you're new to VBA or you just wanna learn more, I encourage you to uh, download this file, step through each of these functions and see how they work. Again, using the F8 key like I did at the beginning of the video. That will really show you how they work and you'll learn a lot uh, by learning some of these different features, different functions, loops, arrays, uh, all this kind of stuff in VBA. So thanks again to everyone for continuing contributing these awesome solutions. Of course, if you have any comments or questions, please leave a comment below. If you enjoyed that video, there are a few simple things you can do to help me out. If you're watching this video on YouTube, click the like button below the video and leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And please don't forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter to get more tips and tricks that will help you learn Excel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.